Hi, this is Christopher Sparrow from iTechGear.org, and I've got a very exciting, very exciting unboxing today. Today we're going to unbox the GPD Win 4. <clears throat> now this is coming straight off the Indiegogos, all right? I have not opened the box. It's been sitting here screaming at me all day, and I've been at work. So, unfortunately, no joy until now, but that's good. Let's go ahead, pop the top, and take a look. Now, this is, as I said, coming straight off of the Indiegogo campaign. Um, the, uh, the GPD Win 4 is an update to, the obviously, the Win 3. Um, but this particular machine, all right, um, is a very different machine from the... Uh, Win 3. The Win 4 has an AMD Ryzen uh, CPU. It's actually a 6800 um, or a 680M. It's got uh, 12 cores, 768 shaders. It has got 32 gigabytes of RAM um, and a 2 terabyte hard drive. All right. Um, it's got a 6 inch screen. Um, that is supposed to be just absolutely all right. Um, there are a couple things here in this box. You gotta love the bubble wrap, but this is this is the little bad boy right here, the GPD Win 4. All right. Now this is a black 32 gigabyte, two terabyte um, unit, as I said. And it's going to be similar, but a little bit different than the Win 3, all right? Aside from the um, uh, GPU, um, well, not GPU, the, aside from the CPU differences, all right, it also comes with an available 4G LTE module, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got all right now like i said this has got a six inch screen it does native landscape to begin with all right um inside the box nice sponge actually real sponge on the top of the box here it's black you can't tell but there's a uh, this is not paper this is sponge all right open that up and you see the inside here um Quality, innovation, excellence, and service for GPD. Um, and um, let's take a look because I am really excited about this. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice. The unit is actually quite large. All right. Uh, trying to get the glare off. All right. Uh, it's actually quite large. Um, nice. Um, joysticks here. Um, so this is the actual unit, all right, and it does come with a <laughs> nice glass screen protector, and it also comes with a nice little top. It says actions speak louder than words. There you see the Chinese as well as the English, all right. Um, inside the box, all right, inside the box. You've got the actual unit itself, and then you have the everything else box. Let's take a look at that first and save the best for last. This has actually got some stiff weight to it. All right. Uh, da -da -da. I don't want to rip. I don't want to rip. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So inside this side, we've got a nice... I'm not sure what that is, but made of plastic and it's got some adhesive on it so we're going to go ahead and hang on to it um, I'm not sure where that goes just yet we have a uh, wrist lanyard and then a uh, USB-C to USB-C cord in white All right, on one side on the other side I'm thinking we're going to have the power brick yes we do it's a 65 watt USB-C power brick alright and then 
somewheres in the middles there is something that I don't know Ooh, and it's glued in there I think I think I think you know what it might just be a spacer it may just be a spacer in between the two because they did stop that right at the end all right so the nice thing about this particular unit all right as opposed to the win three and we're going to go ahead and do a quick comparison underneath the unit all right underneath we have a nice little um, documentation package all right and this is the actual manual that comes with the device it is in English as well as Chinese all right um, English it looks like is going to be in blue nope black <laughs> but this is something to definitely go through um, so it's really got a Chinese first and then an English second because there's the Chinese and there's the English and it starts all right but um, there are some really nice things here where you've got, and let's take a look at the, uh, the actual unit itself. <sighs> All right, so we'll pull it up out. All right, there on the, on the bottom, there is a uh, spot for a, uh, a card here. I'm assuming that's where the uh, interface for the, um, LTE module goes. You've got a, a USB-C port here on that side. Um, you've got a um, memory card slot on this side, as well as what appears to be um, an on, uh, some sort of on-off switch. Right. So reset hole on the other side. On the top. You've got a USB-A, a USB-C, um, the actual power and volume switches are on the top, all right? Power, volume, USB-C, USB-A, and then a headphone jack here, all right? Um, you have a finger uh, fingerprint sensor here, and um, the start button, all right? Joystick, um, A, B, X, Y buttons here, as well as a D-pad on the other side in the other uh, joystick, as well as, oh, you know what? This is the fingerprint sensor. This is the mouse. This is that whole little cute little Blackberry touchpad thingy, all right, that they had many, many years ago on Blackberries. I'm going to go ahead, though, but I'm going to grab the Win 3, and we'll go back over here, all right? It is similar, but it is smaller, all right? <laughs> similar, but smaller, all right? As you can tell, all right? Three on the top and the four on the bottom. Now, the nice thing about the three, all right? The nice thing about the three... The keyboard is one solid piece, and it's all um, solid-state buttons, all right? The nice thing about the Win 4, all right, these are all chiclet keys. So you've actually got some space in between the keys and an actual button as opposed to a touchpad on the 3, all right? Um, I'm going to take some time here, and I'm going to start this thing up and set it up um, later on. But let's grab, while I'm still thinking about it, let's grab, let's grab the LTE module. All right. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure what went on with... Um, 
uh, GPD and why this came out this way. I would have made the device just a little, just a, a tad longer or a tad taller or a tad thicker. Um, one of the things, though, I think th that was a requirement, an actual hardware requirement in, uh, for this, was that they were going to try to figure out some way of ensuring that um, you could go and stick this module on there without having to, without every single unit having to be cellular in nature, all right? Because as you can see, this is a little bit different, all right? This requires a nano SIM, and it's here, all right? The nano SIM slot is here on the bottom, all right? But as you can see, it's got this wonderful little external cable with a USB-C um, uh, adapter on it. What you do is you put the USB-C adapter in here on the bottom, right? And then it clips for you. Now, how does that work? Because <laughs> it's supposed to just, it's supposed to sit there and it's supposed to be secure um, on your device. So, so I thought, I thought, aha, maybe that's not a slot at all. Or maybe, maybe Christopher had it upside I did I had it upside down all right so this actually goes in on the top all right so what there is a, a little latch on the bottom here all right and there are clippies I don't know if you can if I can maybe there you go all right there's clippy here and clippy here and what happens is there are two clippies this is not a slot this is actually just a clippy thing for this module, what happens is you take this and you stick it there, all right, and it holds tight, and then you take this and you put it in the top, all right, and that hold, it's supposed to hold you together, like so. So, there's at least no... Man, this thing is really kind of complex and complicated. So, let's let's try this again. This has got to go here on the bottom. All right. Aha! Did you hear the click on the top? The second click. Now that's on there. Now that's not going anywhere. And you take this and you snug it in there like that. All right. Now, this is... Now a, a cellular equipped and enabled device, all you need to do is put the SIM in there. All right, the problem though with this is two things. Number one, this is a completely external unit and it takes up the USB uh, four um, compatible USB-C um, styled spot on the top, all right? Um, and while that may not necessarily be a bad thing when you're out and about, when you are in, this is a full-blown Windows 11 home PC, all right? This will handle everything, all right? With the processor that you've got, the, six, uh, the 680M, and with this unit's um, 32 gigabytes of RAM, this will handle just about anything. So if this were your only PC in either uh, high school or college, you'd be all right. All right, you would be okay from a power perspective, from from a capability perspective. All right, from a um, um, connectivity related perspective, um, you may have some issues. Uh, yes, there is a USB C um, or Thunderbolt port or, uh, here on the bottom, and I believe it's Thunderbolt three and not four. Um, it will fit into a dock um, that is available from AliExpress, which <laughs> I just happen to have handy. All right. So the issue here um, is not necessarily the 
the issue here is is more along the lines of they the engineering on this at least the design on this is is it leaves something uh, to be desired now the, from a cost perspective I totally get it all right the problem that we have with this though is that this particular docking station there had to be a couple of, of uh, engineering changes um, in the beginning now without without uh, the um, uh, LTE compatible um, module clipped in on the back you can use the USB uh, dock from the wind uh, uh, GPD 3 with the 4 it fits according to uh, GPD the problem though is if you've got this module on the back it doesn't quite fit you've got to do some really weird things to the dock in order to get the unit to sit in it correctly um, but what's really nice is this particular dock has got um, uh, a USB uh, 3.1 port all right it's got an HDMI 2 port and it supports 4k at 60 Hertz um, uh, the USB uh, C port supports video uh, charging and data um, the other USB C port uh, supports up to 65 watts uh, of power um, there is an RJ 45 uh, jack on this uh, dock that supports 10 100 and gigabit uh, Ethernet networks all right and um, like I said it's all for Windows um, the nice thing about this is that I mean it all goes together the bad thing is that you know, it's a little gimpy all right but the nice thing overall this is a complete gaming system in your hand all right this goes and this can go anywhere and everywhere with you it is a full-blown um, Windows 11 compatible PC whereas the GPD win 3 um, ran Windows uh, 10 this runs Windows 11 now it comes with home it should run professional without a problem I've got professional on the on the three um, there is um, man this thing is so exciting it it'll it'll you know you're, it's got uh, L1 and L2 buttons it has got like I said the 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 d-pad the X Y A B buttons on the top it's got a built-in uh, pointing device um, it's got a menu button it has got the cellular it has got uh, action buttons on the back man this thing is a gamers delight all right um, the only only issue that I've had with with either of the, uh, well with with the three overall is that this is a very difficult screen to see things on. Um, if you really want to set this thing up, you really want to be able to go ahead and game with it. It works with a monitor, any size monitor, as long as it's an HDMI based monitor, you're good to go. Um, this is probably one of the more ingenious devices that I have seen. Full blown Windows computer gaming machine in the palm of your hand um, it is it is an amazing amazing thing um, again just to review um, specs with you guys um, AMD Ryzen uh, 6800U processor the 680M um, 12 cores, 768 shaders, 32 gigabytes of RAM in this particular one, though it comes with 16 or 32 of LPDDR5 RAM. All right. Alps 3, uh, 3D joysticks, uh, linear analog trigger buttons, LED atmosphere lamps, dual vibration motors, two custom buttons on the back. All right, these that I mentioned here, all right, you might be able to hear them. Uh, a six axis gyroscope. It has got a six inch native landscape based screen that'll do uh, 45 uh, uh, native uh, resolution, 45 hertz, and 60 hertz. 
uh, sliding design, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 1080p with um, uh, 368 uh, pixels per inch. Um, the um, whole nice uh, uh, full qu uh, QWERTY keyboard layout, um, dome uh, switch keys, intensity adjustable backlight. Uh, it's got a large, large turbo fan in the back that'll go ahead and keep this thing nice and cool. Um, uh, heat dis uh, uh, dis uh, dis <laughs> gotta get them fit. Um, is it's it's uh, with the heat dis uh, uh, Dispiation is is 35% higher than than the previous model, the Win 3. Um, it does have an optical finger navigation, like I said, looked like your Blackberry's used to. Um, it's got three type of finger devices. It fulfills four types of um, uh, fingerprints uh, input using that particular device. Comes in one uh, in um, uh, 500 gigabyte, 512 gigabyte, one terabyte, and two terabyte SSDs. Um, that are PCIe, uh, NVNE, NVMe compatible. Um, comes with Windows 11 Home. It's got USB um, 4 dual um, uh, Type C charging, uh, 4G LTE monitor uh, or a monitor module, as I said. Um, so it is uh, with with uh, Nano SIM support. It's got a smart docking stand. Um, as I mentioned, it does come with um, uh, AAC Super Linear Dual Stereo Speakers. Um, it does come with a micro um, uh, SDXC slot um, that will um, uh, push out to uh, 160 megabytes a, sun, uh, a second. And it comes with Wi-Fi 6, which I believe supports a full 2 gigabit of... Um, all that Wi-Fi goodness. Um, this is really cool. I'm going to try to do some more with this on the site once I get the, everything together and up. This is Christopher Spera from itechgear.org with the GPD Win 4.